I have a React frontend connected to a Keycloak server. I click on the login button and I'm redirected to the Keycloak login form. Now I can call my microservices architecture to read the protected data behind a Spring Gateway application. Here it is. The OS2 protocol has different behaviors depending on the clients used, but I can't use the same workflow for the backend authentication than from the frontend authentication. Let's see in details. I have a backend server which requires to access protected data, but this protected data is behind an OS2 authorization server. When the backend tries to access the protected resources, it will receive a login page. I must show this login page to the final user. Once authenticated, the backend can access the protected resources. Until here, it's okay. I've already done a video about that. Check the link in the corner. But a frontend can't have the same workflow. Let's see why. Let's go back to the initial step, when the authorization server returns the login page from the backend. The authorization server returns a login form because it already knows the backend, because it already trusts the backend. How to create this trust? I first need to register my backend in the authorization server. Then the authorization server returns me a client ID and a client secret I must store in the backend. I need those two keys to talk to the authorization server. But what if I change my backend to a frontend? I can't store the client ID and secret in the frontend, as the user will download the frontend in the browser. Anyone could read those keys. The previous workflow is the authorization code flow. But when using public clients, like a React application or a mobile application, I need an overlayer. I need the PKCE authorization code flow. PKCE stands for Proof Key Code Enhanced Authorization Code Flow. Now, when registering my client in Keycloak, I indicate a hashing algorithm. When starting the communication, the frontend will create a random string as a code verifier. The frontend will encode the code verifier and send it to Keycloak when first asking for the login page. Keycloak will decode it and store the original code verifier. If the login is successful, the frontend must ask again for the access token, and this time the frontend must send the original code verifier. Keycloak will check if it's ok and respond with the access token. The frontend can use now the access token to request the protected resources. Why it is secure now? Because it's Keycloak which requests the callback. So even if I try to send a request by my own with the client ID and the encoded code verifier, I won't have the callback to my application and I won't receive the access token. Ok, so what must I change in my application now? The resources server still need to connect to Keycloak to validate the access token received from the request. The API gateway needs no more OS2 configuration, all is moved to the frontend. For the frontend, I can call the specific endpoints of Keycloak manually, but I would rather use a library for that. And finally, in Keycloak, I must register my frontend as a public client with PKCE. Let's see it. I start with the project used in my previous video, where I connect the API gateway with Keycloak. As said, I need the configuration to connect my resources server with Keycloak. I indicate the URL of Keycloak, and in the security configuration, I indicate which scopes are necessary for each endpoint. And the controller stays simple. I need no more OS2 configuration. Let's go now with the API gateway. Here I need to remove all the security configuration as I move it to the frontend. Now, as I have a frontend connected to the API gateway, I need to configure the cores to avoid the usual problems. That's all, API Gateway clean. Let's move to Keycloak. 
Let's create now my front-end client. I leave those options disabled. The client authentication off means that the client is a public server. If I enable it, I will get a client ID and a client secret, and I don't want a secret. The authorization is for fine-tuned authorization. I don't need this. I leave the rest of the options. The only one which interests me is the standard flow. I will now add the callback URL. This is the one which will make the second request automatically. And I must add the web origins to allow my frontend access keyclock. Let's go now to the advanced settings. If I scroll down, I can see the PKCE configuration. I choose the algorithm to use. And that's all. Finally, I create my scope and add it to my client. That's all, let's finish with the frontend. As said, I can do it all by requesting the key clock endpoint, but it's a lot of hard coding, and there are some libraries which will do it for me. Let's use this one. Wait, wait. OICD or OAuth2? The OAuth2 is the original authentication protocol, and OICD or OpenID Connect is a layer over OAuth2. OICD allows me to get all the necessary information at once. This way, I avoid requesting keyclock each time I need to read protected resources. I have already created a frontend application. I've wrapped all in a component called app. Here is the header component, and this is the app content component. Then I have the toaster component, which are the poppins which display some temporarily information. It's another library I use. I have then the buttons component, which wraps those buttons. And finally, the auth content component. I don't see it now because I'm not authenticated. All I need is to create two helpers. One to talk with Keyclerk and the other to talk with the backend. Let's start with the authentication helper to talk with Keyclerk. This is the URL of Keycloak. The client ID I've configured in Keycloak. The callback URL I've configured in Keycloak. This is to request the access token. I don't want a cookie or something else. Here I must specify the scope I want, the open ID, and the profile as I want to display the username. This first method is to read the user object stored in the local storage. This method doesn't read it from Keycloak. I must first log in to use this method.
This will perform the login. It will redirect the end user to the login page of Keycloak. Finally, the logout method. All those methods are already connected to the buttons. Let's see what I do in the callback page. Here I only call the sign in redirect callback, which will receive the user object and store it in the local storage. This way it's accessible for further requests. Let's continue with the helper to talk with the backend, which is using Axios but with the access token. When calling backend, I need the access token. This access token is the JWT to use in the HTTP header of the requests. This is the actual method I use in the button. I only call the backend if I've already logged my user, if I've already an access token. Let's see now how it works. When I click on the login button, I'm redirected to the Keycloak login page. Here is the endpoint which returns me the Keycloak login page. It contains the client ID the redirect URL, the scopes, and the code challenge, which is the encoded code verifier. When logged correctly, I have the signing callback. I have the callback URL, which is called, and I have the user loaded in my local storage. Now I can call the backend, which returns me the protected resources. In the backend request, I can see now the access token sent in the authorization header. Ok, let's make a quick recap. I've removed the configuration from the API gateway. I've connected my resource server to Keycloak. I've created a public client with PKCE in Keycloak. I've added the library OICD client to my frontend. I've configured my OICD object with the client ID, the Keycloak URL, the callback URL, and the scopes. After logging for the first time, I've used the received access token for all the requests to the backend. That's all for this video. I've also done all the videos about the O2 protocol as a backend server alone, with Keycloak, with GitHub Connect, or with a simple JWT. Feel free to watch them all. And of course, click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. And see you soon. Bye.